Alright, what's up everyone? Welcome back to some structure free learning. And uh, in this video we're gonna do a uh, a problem that's for a statically indeterminate beam using the method of superposition. And what we want to do is calculate the reactions at points A, B, and C, where A is pinned, B is a roller, C is a roller, and I have this uh, uniformly distributed load at two kilonewtons per meter, and this would be called a continuous beam. And what we want to do is calculate the reactions or determine what the reactions are, and then go ahead and draw the shear moment diagram for this thing. Now, the first thing I really need to do is when I'm given a beam, I got to verify that it's statically indeterminate. And really, the way that we check for determinacy is if the simplest way is probably just to go ahead and compare the number of reactions and the num number of equilibrium equations, especially when it's just a beam. And so here I've got this pin support at A, which has two reactions. So I have this AY and AX. And then this pin support at B, which is BY. And then here at C, this would be CY. And note, this is a, a very simple way to check it. Does not work all the time, especially when there's hinges. And really, the hinges you know, provide a essentially you would have to add over here the number of hinges but in any case if the number of reactions is greater than or equal to the number of equilibrium equations plus the number of hinges then it would be statically indeterminate here the number of reactions in this case would be four and this is greater than I have no hinges here so the number of equilibrium equations is three so yes this thing is because four is greater than three this structure is statically indeterminate and the difference between the number of reactions and the number of equations tells us the number of redundance or the re degree of redundancy or the degree of static indeterminacy in the structure so our our structure here not only is it statically indeterminate it's statically indeterminate to the first degree which also means that it has one redundant and what the redundant means is that you can remove one of these reactions and the structure would probably be stable. So for instance, I could remo remove CY and it would be stable. I could remove BY and it would be stable. And I could remove AY and it would be stable. And in this case here, if I removed AX, actually, you know, this structure would not be stable if I applied a horizontal or a lateral load to it. It would just roll off like a skateboard. But you know, there are cases to this. It doesn't work all the time. Now, since we know that there's only one redundant, this means that the method of superposition is, is pretty manageable when there's only one or two degrees of indeterminacy or two redundants that we, we have to account for. So next we want to do is because we have only one redundant, we can go ahead and apply the method of superposition. We don't need to use another technique here. And when we apply the method of superposition, we want to make some drawings and analyze this thing so that we can come up with a compatibility relationship on the deformations. In the method of superposition, the first drawing that we're going to draw is what I call the loading structure. What we want to do is remove one of the reactions to make the structure statically determinate. So if I remove the reaction, the vertical reaction at B, I will be left with the following. And this statically determinate beam here with the, the concentrated load at B, or the reaction at B removed, is what I like to call the loading structure. And I typically use the notation zero, the zero structure here. But I want to look at the deflective shape associated with this loading structure, and that deflective shape would look something like this. And if I define my coordinates so that this is a positive displacement, here's my x-axis for my uh, elastic curve, you know, I, I would notice that I actually have a deflection downwards here, and this I would call this magnitude of deflection, I would call delta B zero. And what I need is, I need to introduce or reintroduce that reaction into another drawing by the principle of superposition. Position, I'm going to add essentially another beam with the vertical load being applied. And what we're saying here is that the sum of these two structures is equal to this total structure right here. So I removed BY and then I reintroduced it. And that is essentially the principle of superposition. And now I can come up with a compatibility relationship. I know that this force or this reaction BY, if this were the structure and BY represented the loading, would cause a displaced shape that looks like this and I would have a magnitude of deflection this is my redundant structure and a lot of times I denote it the one structure and so this would be the deformation at B 
to my first redundant. Now, by the method of superposition, I, use, I can come up with my compatibility relationship. I know that my deformation at this location here, at point B, which is 10 meters from point A, okay, so the deformation at B here should equal zero. This deformation at B is the deformation at 10 meters, which is equal to the deformation of this zero structure, or the loading structure at 10 meters, plus the deformation of the one structure at 10 meters. The sum of those should equal zero. And if I go ahead and I calculate in terms of these deltas, this would tell me that zero is equal to the deformation at uh, 10 meters in the loading structure, which is minus delta B0, because from my drawing, I've drawn it downwards, which is a negative displacement according to the coordinate system that I have, plus delta B1. These deltas just indicate magnitude. I can use whatever technique I want to calculate the deflection of a statically determinate beam. So I can use moment area method, singularity functions, conjugate beam method, virtual work, blah, 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 blah. Or if I you know, happen to have something like Rourke's formulas for stress and strain or the AISC steel manual or whatever textbook that has you know, some standard shapes like this with the deflections you know, tabulated for me, I'm I'm going to use those because those are the quickest and fastest. What you will find is that the deformation for a simply supported beam with a length of 20 meters at the midspan, this deformation, delta B0, is equal to minus 5W L to the fourth over 384 EI plus this, the magnitude of a simply supported beam with a concentrated load in the middle acting upwards would be by, which is the concentrated force, or the magnitude of that applied force, times L cubed over 48 EI. And I can notice right away that the EIs cancel out. Uh, even the lengths, I would get that this would cancel out the L to the fourth. You know, if I can substitute some numbers here, so here I would have zero. What it leaves me with is one equation and one unknown. By is equal to 25 kilonewtons. And assuming that I kept my sign convention all consistent and everything, then this positive number that I get from this result means that the direction that I drew my reaction at B is correct. So By is 25 kilonewtons acting upwards. And by my other equilibrium equations, I can solve for the other reactions. So if I take that original beam with now by being known, and if I take some of the moments about point A equal to zero, here, let me bring that beam down so I can, here's that beam, and if I do some of the moments about point A, I will get, and if I solve and plug and chug for this, you know, by is 25 kilonewtons, then I will get that cy is equal to 7.5 kilonewtons, and then if I just do some of the forces in the vertical, I will get that ay is 7.5 kilo. Done! Those are my reactions, AY, BY, and CY, all acting upwards. With all my reactions known, now all I want to do, all I got to do is apply the same thing I learned way back in static and draw my shear and moment diagrams. You know, the thing I like to do is redraw the structure with all the, the loads on it and reactions on it. So here's my structure with the loading and the reactions all drawn in, and now I just need to follow that process and, and draw that shear and moment diagram. I want to identify segments, so I, d I look at segments as beginnings and ends of distributed loads, or the boundaries of the segments as beginnings and ends of distributed loads, and where I have concentrated forces and moments. This would be the beginning of a, of a segment, here would be another boundary, here is another boundary, so I have essentially two segments that I need to look at, and I will draw vertical lines from those segment boundaries. And so for my shear diagram, you know, I'm going to go up 7.5 kilonewtons because this, you know, the way I tell it, this 7.5 kilonewtons pushes me up to 7.5. And then this distributed load pushes me down linearly. The area here of this distance, remember this distance here was 10 meters. So this area here is 7.5, is, is 2 times 10. This is 20 kilonewtons. And the change I expect from here going to this segment here is 20 kilonewtons, which will take me down to negative 12.5, minus 12.5 kilonewtons. And then I'm going to draw a line that intersects those two points. And because I have a uniform or constant distributed load, I know I'm going to have a linear shear diagram. Then this concentrated force of 25 kilonewtons bumps me up all the way to 12.5. Then I again decrease linearly, or I change from
from 12.5 to this area, which is also 20 kilonewtons, which will take me to negative 7.5, which is right about here. This is what my shear diagram looks like. Where it crosses zero is an important point for me because it's like a local maximum. And this location right here, the way I look at it is that I'm starting at 7.5 kilonewtons, and I need to decrease at a rate of 2 kilonewtons per meter until I get to zero which in this case this x is just going to be equal to 7.5 kilonewtons divided by 2 kilonewton per meter will just be just 3.75 meters so that's what that distance is and it also is the same here this distance is 3.75 now I'm ready to draw that moment diagram and for this diagram I know I start at zero because I have no concentrated moment it's gonna be parabolic it's gonna increase because I have a positive shear I will be increasing this area which is one half 7.5 kilonewtons times 3.75 meters and that is equal to 14.0625 kilonewton meters which is the change in moment from this point to here this location right there where my shear is zero and that gives me a local maximum so I am going to expect that I will increase to 14.0625 that is 14.0625 kilonewton meters and I am increasing this is a linear shear so I, I expect a parabolic moment the, the slope of my moment diagram is 7.5 which would be here and then the slope here would be zero so I know my parabola looks like this and then I decrease parabolically of a change of this area here which is again one half base times height uh, to one half let's put this over here one half 12.5 times this distance which was 10 minus 3.75 which would be 6.25 meters and that would tell me that this area is equal to 39.0625 kilonewton meters so that's a change I expect which will take me down to 25 kilonewton meters so that means I would expect this point to be somewhere down here negative 25 and again increasing parabolically this is a linear shear and then same thing here you know now I have this area here which is a positive change in shear and this value is also 39.0625 so that means I'm going to increase up to at this location right here 14.0625 so here this point is 14 0.0625 so here is zero and I should have hopefully this looks symmetric this is a continuous beam this is a very popular uh, kind of application for bridge structures if you uh, have any questions let me know and enjoy see ya